Good morning and welcome to the Greenwood Missionary Baptist Church, uh, June 7, 2020 morning services. Uh, our location is 3501 East Meyer Boulevard, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, we want to welcome you all again and say uh, this is Communion Sunday. Uh, our responsive reading for uh, this morning will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 34. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 uh, through 34. Uh, and it reads thusly, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do you as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together, to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together to condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. We read here hearing this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 34. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Uh, our announcements this morning are that we was asked that you continue to be in prayer uh, for our Greenwood family. Uh, for the community as a whole, uh, not only locally, uh, but as well as our country and uh, globally. And then also we want to be in prayer for the family of Sister Gloria Dukes. Uh, her services will be this week. More information will be coming forth uh, on her services. Uh, we also just want to make sure that those who are on our sick and shedding list, uh, that we continue to be in prayer for them. Uh, and then also let us be in prayer for the Miller family as well. Uh, this morning, we will have a selection uh, by uh, Sister Cammy Wooder. Uh, I'll come back with the Word of God. Uh, our text for today will be 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 through 22. Again, 1 Peter chapter 3, basically 15 through 22. Uh, at this time, we're going to ask if Sister Cammy would give us a selection, uh, and then I'll come back afterwards uh, with our word for this morning. Amen. Thank you. 
knowing that you can do all things in faith, but faith. But it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray and give you thanks. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. amen. I'd like to use for a topic this morning, pointing others to Christ for salvation. Pointing others to Christ for salvation. Uh, at this point, uh, our emotions have been stretched beyond what we believe their capacity to be. Uh, the coronavirus pandemic has taken, uh, right now, a rightful second place to the injustice that has been perpetuated for centuries in this country and abroad. Within roughly 12 weeks, uh, we've seen the culmination of dangers uh, to both humanity and the social climate of the whole world. People are hurting. Uh, they're mad, they're frustrated, uh, confused, and then there may be some that are perhaps even indifferent to what's going on. Uh, on one end, we're being told that our lives don't matter because the economy of the nation is more important than the health of billions of people. And then on the other hand, we are on, on the streets protesting uh, because some feel our black lives are less important than the lives of others. Shouts of help. Help us are echoing throughout the streets of Minneapolis and Atlanta, uh, Buffalo and Washington, D.C., and yes, even here in our very own city, Kansas City. Uh -huh. Screams of passion towards a cause that is bigger uh, uh, than the threats of jail and retaliation and even thrown gas containers. Yeah. We are in trouble, and the answers really to our plight is either watching me right now or listening to what I'm doing as we speak. Last few weeks, I, I've been attending a Zoom class on um, worry free living with Dr. Goldman, and, uh, and the class and the conversations are rich, uh, and they provide clarity and confirmation to the multiplicity of things that I myself are confronted with, attacked by, or uh, maybe even ponder yeah. more often than not. Uh, it is not helping me, or it's helping me uh, to focus on my purpose and make a, a, a conscious effort to not allow the things that are going on in this world uh, and, and the people in it to rob me of God's promise, uh, God's ordained, and God's prepared blessings that are just looking uh, to find me. And I want to share with you that God got some blessings that's looking to find you as well. Uh, learning to lay aside the weights of life that, 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 that now I understand God has never really uh, uh, asked me to lift the loads, uh, but he's merely asked me to acknowledge their presence and then surrender those loads to him. Hebrews 12 and 1 reminds us that wherefore seeing that we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which do so easily to set us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Tell your neighbor, stop lifting. God's got it. The Hebrew writer encouraging us to, to not look at all the stuff that we've been facing, but to look at the faces that have overcome similar situations are worse things with God right there by their side. It is those faces, those clouds of witnesses that have endured, believed, and sacrificed uh, uh, to lay a path for others to follow to make it through. We're going to be all right. Uh, We're going to be all right because uh, there's others who went before us that have shown us that we can do this thing. Even in our world of Jiffy Mix and Jiffy Pop Popcorn, Instant Grits and Immediate post and responses, next day arrivals from Amazon's and Cash App transactions. There's an underlying practice that will allow us uh, to not only be overcomers, yeah. but in a position to teach others just how to overcome. Yeah, yeah. At some point, we just got to uh, 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 stop relying on self and become those witnesses yes, that we so easily have relied on with others. Uh, and, and we got to stand up and be a witness. Are you going to be a witness? Yes, Tell your next neighbor, I'm going to stand up and be a witness. Yes, uh, to be a witness, you have to, you have, to have something to share. Uh, you got to be willing, amen, with this sharing that, 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 that it's not only in the form of what we say, but, but our witness also has to be in the form of what we do. Yes, uh, as we maneuver through this complex web of life right before our lives, uh, each of you can contribute uh, to the furtherance of humanity and open doors to others to enjoy and grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we do this? Uh, in order to do this, first and foremost, we got to realize that our witness has to be authentic. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say authentic. authentic. Peter expressed that even in the midst uh, of misconduct and persecution, there is a, a way that we as believers are to conduct ourselves to usher in the move of God. You, you do know that we 
we, we, we got a way of calling upon God, and if we do what we're supposed to do, God is inclined to have to do what he said he would do. We don't have to have the privilege of selecting our authenticity. In other words, uh, I can't choose when I want to be authentic or how I be authentic. I just got to be authentic, amen? And, and our authenticity is a, it's a balanced reflection of our collective walk in this process. And each and every one of us are in what we are considered uh, uh, the sanctification process. We, we walk in towards our salvation. We're working on our salvation. It's a process that God is leading us through in. And, and, and what happens is that as I'm walking in this collective process, uh, there's an understanding that I'm not what I need to be. Yeah, well. But I, I, I'm sure not what I used to be. Hallelujah. We, we, we still have residue of our past on us. Yeah. So, so some of us got a little bit more than others, but that, that's not right. Residue is still residue. And, and, and what's happened is that, 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 that while we grant God access to our, our total selves, he's making changes that are Growing us day by day. Right. See, our authenticity acknowledges our flaws. Uh -huh. See, what happens to this girl is that every now and then I, I have to be able to be honest and say, you know, sometimes I'm struggling with this thing. Yeah. Sometimes this thing ain't as easy as it looks, amen. I, I know I'm pastor, amen, and I, I know we members and we've grown in the church, amen, but, but sometimes stuff hits you that you just don't always know how to handle it, amen. But that's when God sets you down and rests you for a moment and he says to you, now wait on me. The Bible declares that they that wait on the Lord yes, shall renew their strength. Right. See, our flaws, amen, it speaks uh, to Jesus' power to make us not respond as we would, but as we should. Uh -huh. From verses 8 through 11, Peter, he addresses what we should do. He says, be of one mind. That means united in the spirit. He says, be compassionate. That means we're sympathizing with one another. In other words, I, 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 I don't quite know what you're going through, but since you're going through it, I'm going to sympathize with you. Amen? Because what I understand is that, 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 that uh, on one day, you're going through something, and you need somebody to be there with you. On, on tomorrow, I might be going to go through something, and I need somebody to sympathize with me. He also says, loving each other as one family. Pious, uh, pious and, and courteous, which which points to compassion and humility. In other words, amen, as I, I'm not sympathizing with somebody, I got to be humble enough to realize that I need somebody to sympathize with me as well. He goes on to encourage abstaining from returning evil from evil and uh, but, but flipping the script on such actions by doing the opposite of what would be uh, humanly logic. In other words, uh, human logic says if somebody hit me, then I hit them back. And if somebody spit on me, I spit on them back. Uh, but the Bible teaches us a couple of things. It says, turn the other cheek. Uh, it, it says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So what happens is that when I want to usher in the power of God, I've got to do the opposite of what the enemy would expect me to do to be able to get God to move. Peter's God is five words tend to be the last thing that some want to hear in this oppressive season that we're in. Yet, does that make God's answer and those who promote it invalid? Uh, the call is to offer blessings for the very people who have invoked anger and evil thoughts in your hearts. Let me pause for a moment and acknowledge that uh, folks are going to tick you off. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, if you ain't going to say amen, I say it for you. Amen. Yeah. Uh, amen. Some of y'all right now know some folks done ticked you off this morning. Amen. Ticked you off all week. Amen. You sitting there huffing and puffing, upset and groaning and saying, boy, if I could just get her back and you still probably flock on ways that you can do that. Yeah. But I, I need you to understand that, that they're going to get you upset. They're going to make you mad and they're going to maybe even want to make you uh, want to cuss sometimes. But, but you got to ask the Lord to lift me from that spirit. Yeah. Amen. To live my tongue. Amen. Man, deliver my tongue from saying stuff that ain't supposed to be said because I realize that I, I am a living example of Jesus Christ and, and the work that can take place when I allow him to move within my life and direct what I do. Yes, sir. So we got to operate in righteousness because your witness can't be fake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, I hear you, but they, they just don't have to get this one. <laughs> I, I, I hear that often, amen, Pastor. They, they brought this one up on themselves, amen. And, and, and so I, I, I 
feel like I feel so much better if I just let them know what's on my mind. But I, I found out that, that you can tell somebody, oh, and, and then you actually, because you are a believer and God is, begins to work within you, you start to feel worse by the way that you address that from the standpoint that now you say, okay, Lord, I, I know I was wrong. Please forgive me. And then you find yourself at some point, maybe not now, but you might go back and say, you know what, I was wrong how I handled that. And I'm going to ask you for my for, uh, for forgiveness. See, the problem with them getting this one is that you are possibly forfeiting your own blessings. And uh, your authenticity points to your calling, and your lips can taint the very calling that God has called you upon. Right, the latter part of verse 9 reminds us of our calling, and there are blessings that are possibly attached to it. Verse 10 goes on and confirms that keeping our tongues free from evil and our lips free from God, that word God means treachery, Versus one good days and an enjoyable life. I don't know about you, uh, but, but Sister Kevin, but I, I, I want good days. Yes, I, I want an enjoyable life. Amen. Amen. I, I like waking up in the morning and, 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 and go to my refrigerator and get what I get and, and a whole lot of other stuff coming along with it. Amen. I, I like going to work. Amen. And when I get to work, things are well. And when I get home, things are well. There wasn't a whole lot of foolishness in the midst of it. Amen. Now, I ain't saying that's an everyday occasion. Amen. But I and enjoyable life. Amen. I like having those good days. I, 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 in essence, this speaks to this word called peace. Keep in mind that peace doesn't always mean that things are going to always be good. But because of our walk with God, we can trust that it will work out. Hallelujah for our good. Tell you, maybe it's going to work out for you good. Verse 11 says, Let them shun evil, do good. Let them seek peace and ensure it. Lord, keep, uh, the Lord keeps a watchful eye over uh, those who practice and walk in righteousness. Now you say, Pastor, why are you talking about practicing and walking? Amen? See, sometimes you got to learn how to walk before you can walk. That's where the practice comes in. Amen? So, so usually a baby will start to stand up. They want to make sure that they got their legs up under them. And then they'll start taking steps and they might fall from down to time. But what happens is that over time, if they keep practicing that procedure, they'll learn how to walk. And what God is trying to teach us is that sometimes, amen, even though you might be grown, there's times when you got to learn how to get back up and take small steps so that you can learn how to walk again. See, God is open. And he opens his ears to our prayers. And, and you want your prayers to reach his ears and get a response, right? Uh, so, so you got to start living right. See, doing so delivers a coverage uh, that surpasses anything that you have ever known. He promises nothing will harm or destroy us. However, although sometimes we might suffer unjustly because of our unjust folks, our situation, in such cases our attitude should be free of fear and not disturbed by what appears to be oppressive. In other words, some stuff look like one thing, but it ain't always what it looks like. Right. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, what you're going through might not be what you think it is. Right. It might be just preparing you for what God is getting ready to take you to. Yeah. Now, in addition to authenticity in our witness to others, as you lead others to salvation through Jesus Christ, point number two is that your witness has to be sacrificial. Right. Peter makes a transition in verse 15 and says, sanctify the Lord God in your heart. We must be willing to set God apart in our hearts. In other words, he is saying there's some other, other stuff that might be in our hearts. He said, but you got to learn how to set God in a separate spot in your heart. Because when you set him in a separate spot in the heart because of the power that comes from God, he'll overtake all that other stuff that's in your heart if you allow him to have a space in it. Yes, when was the last time you spent the whole day with just the Lord? Or uh, shared Jesus Christ with a perfect stranger? or a game uh, of yourself or something because God led you to do so, not because you were asked or was trying to impress somebody else. Right. See, our call is actually on display right now. Hallelujah. Right. You say, Pastor, I, I mean, you, my call is on display. What do you mean it's on display? See, we've been asked to do some unconventional things in some unconventional times, amen? And, and, and there are family and friends, and I trust God. It don't matter where I'm at. If I know who he is, it got to come out of me. Amen. Amen. Many churches have asked their members to do three things over the stay home orders. First, view the online services at a certain time. That's live or recorded. Then they say, can you continue to give? Amen. And see, that principle does not change even when the amount does. Just because I might have a less amount of money does not mean that my tithes are any less valid. In other words, if I got a reduction because I lost a job or what have you, then I'm still paying based upon what God has done for me. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. And then we ask you to pray. See, God takes our individual prayers and then he 
Jesus again and said, ask them collectively uh, because we pray in unity even when we're not physically together. How many believers all over the world have not made these sacrifices? You ain't got to answer me. If it's you, just say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Thinking perhaps that they don't know I'm not watching, they don't know I ain't giving, and they don't know I ain't praying. Now, we, we, we are talking about witnessing, and although I or other pastors may not know the answer to the question that I'm talking about or your viewing or your giving or your praying habit, there are folks around us who see. Yeah, that's right. Amen. There's folks around us who are looking at our action, uh, 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 and, and, and they're looking at God's people to determine whether or not they are authentic enough for them to follow through this thing. All right. It is for this very reason that our walk and our witness has to be sacrificial. 1 Corinthians 8, 13 says, Wherefore, if meat make my brothers to offend, I will not eat flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. In other words, Paul is addressing the possibility of those who don't truly know God but seek to establish a relationship with him might be hindered by, amen, the eating of meat that was had been offered to idols. See, God is bigger than any idol. Yes, sir. Yes. Tell he's bigger, amen. Yes, and, and because of the idols, uh, those idols don't actually exist. So any food that's offered to them is not defiled because it ain't going nowhere. Right. Hallelujah. However, Paul points to the sacrifice and by not eating meat that he knows it is untainted, but because of others' previous beliefs, Amen. That, he, uh, that, that, that they might be. He says, I'm not going to eat it because I don't want to make them stumble in their walk towards Jesus. When we make intentional efforts to live sacrificially to lead others to Christ, it assists, amen, in wording of false accusations because they are unsubstantiated. In other words, when people start talking about you, they can't talk about it. They can talk about you, but if it ain't true, it ain't true. Amen. One of the greatest feelings Sister Carolina had it, 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 it is that when someone accused me of doing something, only to see that their attacks don't line up with the reality. Oh, Ooh, what happened when they told you you was a mess, but God said you ain't? What happened when they told you you wasn't going to be nothing, and God said, yes, you will? What happened when they told you all the stuff that you used to be, amen, and God said, you ain't that no more, amen? Now, this doesn't mean that uh, uh, that you won't be missed, uh, messed with, amen? He's going to mess with you, amen? The enemy going to mess with you, folks going to mess with you, but, but the level of suffering from living right does not compare to the suffering when you done done wrong. When trying to win children and grandchildren and siblings, friends, co-workers, and others to Christ, that 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 which you have the freedom to do might not be the appropriate thing to do because you want to be an effective witness. Now, lastly, to be effective in our witness, others have to see that accepting the Lord in your lives has to have made a difference. Yes, sir. Meaning that point number three, your witness has to be transformative. Yes, uh, we point to Christ by looking to him as the foundation of all change. Peter concludes the text in verse 18 by speaking to the works of Jesus Christ that allowed for transformation in the lives of sinners. Uh, if you read it, it says that for Christ also once suffered for sins, the just or unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. While the ark was apparent, preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water, the light figure, or the light figure, whereunto even baptism do also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers, being made subject to him. Peter points to what seems to be unfair, not necessarily uh, for salvation to be secure for those who choose to believe. Uh, how is it that the just or the righteous are dying once and all for the unjust? Right. He said, wait a minute, that don't make sense, amen, that, that a just person died for unjust people, amen. But that's just what Jesus did. And, and not only did he die, but he went and he preached to the spirits in prison which are identified as those who were disobedient even before the days of Noah. Right. So now Peter is going all the way back into the Old Testament talking about how folk were disobedient even before Noah and Jesus go back and preaches to them about the truth and how to be unrebellious and what happened as a result of what they did. See, man has rebelled against God uh, 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 in many ways for a long time. Yeah. Yet, look at God. 
some of y'all for a moment, because some of us say, I ain't got patience for that. Now, what if God acted like we act? What if God didn't have patience with us? And so what happens, a lot of times God said, the very stuff that you ain't got no things for, that's the very thing I got an issue with you with as well. So you talk about you ain't got no patience, and, and, and so I, I, I got to be patient with you. So you got to learn how to do that thing. Lastly, when we accept Jesus Christ as the righteous one, laying aside sin and picking up righteousness in an effort uh, to live in peace and draw others in through our life, we identify as belonging to him. Do you want to belong? Do you want folks to know who you belong to? Man, there ain't nothing like, you know, you go out to a big old amusement park and you hope that the kids don't get lost, but hoping that they got a tag or something on them, they let them know that this is my daughter, or I'm such and such, and my mama name is this, my daddy name is this, and my phone number is this. And then you hear over the loudspeaker, such and such is here at the front office and we need a parent or guardian to come get her. And what I'm saying is that when we going through the trials and tribulations of life, it's good that when we out here low, somebody can say, ooh, wait a minute, that's a light shining. And I see that light shining, let me call on your daddy and say, hey, somebody out here low, and they need to see the left here. I'm just talking about being a light so that God can be illuminated in the lives of others. See, that's an earthly illustration of the divine mercy of Christ in which he died. Because he talks about, he talks about baptism in, in which an internal or uh, uh, spiritual transformation takes place. And, and now what we do is we broadcast it externally to others that I belong to him. Yeah. Hallelujah. He goes on and says that now as a result of that, Jesus died and he was resurrected, which is very similar to us going into the water, coming back up. And now we've been resurrected and we ain't what we should be or we should be what we was. And as a result of it, we got to understand too that the water didn't make the difference. Because if I'm not changed on the inside, amen, all I did was took a dip in a small pool, amen. Peter then clears up any misinterpretation of what Jesus is doing now as he is still transforming life. So our lights should be shining brighter than ever before. Ask the neighbor, is your light drawing or deterring others from Jesus? And there must be the salvation. Just to recap who Jesus is. Yes. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to earth. And, and, and he had a witness that was authentic and, and, and sacrificial and, and transformative. Man had a problem with sin and sin was consuming humanity. Jesus would be offered as the payment for sin and the gateway, amen, for us into salvation. Yes. Jesus would heal the sick and he would help the blind see. He would command men to walk and he would set the tone for us to reconcile and be reconciled back to God. He surrendered to the will of the Father. He was accused without a cause. He went to the cross and there from the cross saw forgiveness for those who did not know what they were doing. He gave up the ghost. The Bible declared that then he was taken down and buried in a barber tomb. He promised that he would rise again. The Bible says that he stayed there for a lot of time. All day Friday, all day Saturday, but early Sunday morning he got up and this confirmed and then he went about it to confirm his resurrection. He walked and rolled away a maze. He set he met the disciples in the upper room. And back from the upper room, he went and they would ask him, Jesus, give us a sign. He said, don't worry about a sign. I'm going to sit in the heaven, but you're going to be witnesses unto the people, not only at home, but in the neighborhood. Not, not only in the neighborhood, but out in the countryside. Not only in the countryside, but all over the world. And one day, he declared that he would return. He, he led us to a place with no more crime. He's going to lead us to a place with no more dying. No more friction, no more this and that. Nobody telling you can't do this. No more corona, no more cancer, no more death, no more this, no more that. Know that you are the key to someone choosing to serve the Lord. Think about everything that you do going forward. And ask yourself, before you do anything from now on, will my actions lead to God withholding my rewards? And will it make somebody else die and not know it? See, change is inevitable. And often, uh, it, it has to weave its way through the terrain of life yes. to have this life-changing impact. Isn't it kind of ironic, uh, often before a storm gets here, you hear about it taking place somewhere out in the ocean, uh, and then what happens is that I tell you that it's supposed to make landfall by this many days, and then it has to go from landfall, and then it comes across the mountains, and then it has to come down and drop into the plain, and then it sweeps across the country, but what happens is that at some point it will arrive. And I need you to understand that your blessings are going to arrive. God's peace is going to arrive. We might have to go through a few things to get to it. 
but God is going to do this. God is working, and a change is going to come. God is working, and a change is going to come. When it does, just make sure that you're on the winning side. Hallelujah. We now extend the invitation. There may be someone out there this morning who does not know Jesus Christ and the Father of their seat. Uh, they've made up in their mind or they've thought about how can I do this thing the right way. Uh, they've seen other people and, and other people's witness uh, and, and it deteriorated them and it made them think that I, I'm not worthy because I see what they're doing. And, and, and what I'm asking now in the name of Jesus that if there's anyone out there like that right now, I want you to know that uh, Jesus sees you. Jesus knows who you are and that Jesus wants you uh, to open your heart, your mind, say, Lord, I need you. And, and that I know that if I can surrender my life to you, that, Lord, you will do something in my life that nobody else has been able to do. Uh, I don't know. I don't care how much you done messed up. I don't care what you done done. I want you to understand that God has you, and God has you in the palm of your hand. So if you can surrender your heart, here at the church, we say, come by back. Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Candidate for baptism, an individual who may not have known Jesus Christ to begin with and have decided that now I'm going to confess with my heart, believe, confess with my mouth, believe my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, He died and He rose. Bible says that through our confession and our belief, we should be saved. Uh, and, and so you can be saved now. You, you, no matter how much you've messed up, no matter how many things that you thought you've done wrong, uh, God is a forgiving God. Uh, and not only that, but He already knows what you've done. Uh, so really, he's just waiting on you, amen, to come back and, and say, Lord, I need you. I want you in my life. Will you help me? Uh, we ask that if, if you are outside of the arc of, of Kansas City, uh, or if you're even in Kansas City, you can call us at 816-471-7358, uh, and, and we'll get back to you. We'll have prayer with you. Uh, but we want you to know that God loves you. God is looking forward to having a, a, a fun-filled uh, a, a relationship with you. However, he's also requiring you to be obedient. He's also requiring us to walk upright. He's requiring us to learn of what is him so that we may be uh, witnesses, uh, ambassadors to this world. With that being said, at this time, we want to thank you all. Uh, it's time for us to leave home today. God has been so good. Uh, he's shined on us. He's made us aware of who we are in him, and we thank him. We ask now a special prayer for all of our elderly, uh, our, not elderly, we'll call our elder senior, senior statesmen. Uh, many of them are at home and uh, would love to be here at church, and we understand that many of you all will be as well. But we're grateful to God that he has made ways that we can still share with you the beauty of being in relationship with him. Now, may the grace of God, our Father God, we ask you for your love on today. That, Lord, that you would meet us, Father, where we are. Lord, move within our individual households and uh, places, Father, where we are witnessing, Lord, the sermon on today. That, Lord, that you may move us, Lord, in a, in a position, in a direction that will help us to be beneficial, Lord, to you. Lord, I thank you, Father. Through our adversity, Master, we are made better in relationships with you. And that, Lord, through you, Father, that we can open our minds and hearts to do those things that are pleasing in our sight. Lord, I ask that you remove from us, Lord, anything that is not like you. That, Lord, that you would have precedence in our life. And that, Lord, as we move, Lord, throughout this countryside, throughout this world, that we be an example, Father, witnesses of being in right relationship with you. I thank you for every member right now. We ask now, Father, that you would move the Lord in their hearts and their minds. Teach them those things, Lord, that are necessary for them, Lord, to continue to walk in the direction that you have prescribed for them. Lord, we thank you for our youth. We ask now that you cover them over this summer. Lord, keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Pray, Lord, a special prayer for Jalen Williams. Ask him, Lord, that you would be with him, Father, as he prepares to go back to school. We ask now that you cover him and his teammates, Father, and those on campus. And then, Lord, we pray now, Father, that you strengthen us, Lord, that our walk with you will be one that is not based upon our own strength. But, Lord, you said that where we are weak, you may strong. So, Lord, we appreciate, Lord, the strength that you have to carry us through all things. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forever. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. 
Amen. God bless you all.